Hello, friends, and welcome to the International Fab Talk family. Thank you for being a part of our journey, dear friends. And I'd love to thank all the unsung heroes who've been a part of the International Fab Talks. We would love to connect with many more unsung heroes. And today we have somebody who's with, with us, an unsung hero who has done her very best in the field of psychology, in the field of creating that beautiful space for all human beings out there. She wants to bring about a balance in the lives of children, parents, adults, etc. She is none other than Dr. Radha Balachandar. Ma'am, welcome to the session and thank you for accepting the invite here. Yeah, it's a great pleasure. Thanks for this wonderful opportunity to share my experience and the resources for that. Yes, dear. Thank you very much, ma'am, for accepting the invitation to the International Fab Talks. Dear friends, it's our duty to introduce our guests now in an official way. Ma'am, with your permission, I go ahead and share your profile in an official way, dear. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, ma'am. Friends, it's a pleasure and privilege and a honor too to share the profile of our special celebrity today. She is Dr. R. Radha Balachandar. I repeat again, she is Dr. R. Radha Balachandar from Chennai. Uh, she is the director of Kids Care Rehab Center, Chennai. And dear friends, apart from that, I'd like to take you deep into her profile. She's completed a PhD and as I earlier mentioned, she is the director of the Kids Care Rehab Center in Chennai, India. She is the founder of Brain to Act program. She is a pediatric physiotherapist, pediatric physiotherapist for all of the parents out there. It's for you and psychological counselor as well and specialized in early intervention, sensory integration, behavior therapy, child development therapies, functional training, wellness training, rhythmic movement training, NLP practitioner, remedial therapy, social skill training, recce master, acupuncture, and brain gym practitioner as well. And she has more than 20 years of experience in this beautiful field of transforming lives in the right way. She provides online and center-based ther uh, therapies classes for children with learning and attention difficulties like autism, ADHD, learning disabilities, and development delay. She provides online attention and concentration classes for school children. She was awarded Distinguished Clinician Award at Indian Physiotherapy Association conference held in Chennai in March 2020. She was also awarded the Best Physiotherapist Award at the International Physiotherapy Conference, TerraCon 19. She was awarded the Best Pediatric Therapist in Medical Excellence Award. She also received the Medical Excellence Award, I guess, organized by the World Tamil Chamber of Commerce. She presented several research papers in various international conferences and seminars. She's been conducting various webinars and online training programs, especially for children, not to forget the teachers, the health professionals, and above all, the parents. She has been providing the awareness about parenting, child development, autism, ADHD, learning disabilities, and the importance of early intervention to the public through various health programs in leading television channels as well, like Sun TV, Jaya TV, Makkal TV, Win TV, and Peppers TV. The daily recorded programs as well as the monthly live interactive programs are being telecast, telecasted currently. And today she is sharing the space with us. Thanks for being so humble and gracing the International Fab Talks, ma'am. Thank you very much. Dear friends, she has also been conducting several workshops at the national and international level to various target groups. As we earlier mentioned, it could be parents, children, healthcare professionals, the head of the schools like school headmaster and headmistress, teachers in India and Malaysia as well. She developed and implemented Brain to Act movement based intervention for students to enhance academic performances and academic performance, cognitive skills, emotional intelligence, attention, memory, handwriting, spelling, coordination skills, and much more. She has a solid experience in performing in-depth patient evaluation, develop treatment plan, and manage individualized treatment focus on the patient's individual goals, such as improving coordination, balance, strength, endurance, and sensory integration skills. She also has been working as a guest lecture, lecturer and addressed MSc students counseling and psychotherapy students at the open university level, that is Tamil Nadu open, open university and 
about childhood disorders. She focused on that while dealing with these students, the MSc students, and adolescence and puberty and development psychology. So she was a guest lecturer and she addressed the MSc students based on counseling and psychotherapy and uh, child disor childhood disorders, adolescence and puberty as well, development psychology as well. And that was uh, between 2015 to 2020. Dr. R. Radha has extensive experience in working in different settings with children from birth through adolescence with a variety of childhood conditions, including learning disorder, neurological impairments, de development delay and cerebral palsy, and uh, club foot, muscular uh, dystrophy, if I'm getting that right, Down syndrome, autism, ADHD, pediatric conditions, and parenting, and much more, my dear. Apart from that, there are a few words which I've skipped. Ma'am is going to share that with us. She worked as a pediatric physiotherapist in Malaysia. She earned a PhD on movement-based intervention for kids with learning uh, difficulties, LD and ADHD, at the University of Madras. She pursued her master's in physiotherapy with a specialization in pediatric neu neurology and completed MSc in psychology and a PG diploma in psychological counseling and what more. So much, so much more, my dear friends. There are still so many feathers in her cap. Let's get to meet our special celebrity today. Join me to get to know more about her life and profession. Hello, ma'am, and welcome to the session. Yeah, yeah, it's a great honor for me to share my experience. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, it's a honor for us to have you here. You've been achieving so many things and yet you would like to still contribute more of yourself to the society. We are really surprised. I wouldn't be there where you are today, but I really admire you where you are and how much of hard work you might have been putting into all of this to reach out to the people who really require all of these services. Hats off to you for your brilliant performance till date and receiving so many awards. Thank Dear you. ma'am, the first question with the main round of the interview goes like this. How would you define yourself? Who is the real Radha? Uh, actually, first, let me uh, tell who is real Radha. Yeah. First, uh, in the childhood, I'm very soft and then I won't open up much. I'm a very uh, soft-spoken and then even teacher will see where is Radha, whether she's very shy like that. And then there is a major transformation where I joined a master of physiotherapy, BPT, and then master. At the time, my professor told that you have to share, you have to open up, you have to uh, talk, whatever, because you are going to treat uh, parents or you're going to treat your kids or a uh, uh, patient, so you have to open up. So slowly, from that Radha to this Radha, now... I am motivating a lot of parents and then I am giving a lot of, uh, uh, I'm conducting webinars, I'm conducting workshops. So it's total transformation. That's what uh, whenever you're learning disability, a kid or your parents who met me, I will tell them, see, now I'm talkative. Now I can share whatever points you needed. But at the childhood, I'm totally different. So that's a rather in my personal way. As in the professional way, uh, I'm very much attached to the special needs children. So my, my, my focus is more on uh, therapy-based, how we can rehabilitate. Uh, I want to see if the kid comes to me with, for example, when kids comes with me, no head control, when kids not achieve the head control, so I just see how we can achieve our head control. If the child is very aggressive, artistic uh, child is very aggressive, how we can count up? So I just see the what and all the characteristic the child has, how to minimize the characteristic, how to maximize the strength. So more on therapy side is my professional so I'm so much attached to the special needs children and then mainly the parents because. Uh, they are totally uh, depressed and then they don't know what to do, how to lead their life, how to lead their child life. It's totally like a traumatic uh, experience every day. It's not like uh, a single day because as a parent, as a parent, I know uh, to um, we make our child to read or study or do their household work or do their work. It's highly challenging nowadays, normal parents. So if you think about your artistic child, 24 by 7, the child 
will do anything they want. They are in their own world. So we have to imagine, we have to stand in the parent's foot and then we have to see how traumatic it is. They don't know what the child will be next. Immediately child will be rushed and then hit on the self-harming behavior will be or the child will be spinning or it will be hyperactive. So it will be like that. So professionally, uh, I'm more attached to special needs children and then I want to rehabilitate them. What a beautiful way to share about you, ma'am. That's really very nice. And what is the big takeaway, ma'am? And the clarity that you've shared is normal children to control our normal children itself is such a big task. It's not that easy. And we find it quite difficult to manage our normal children. Imagine children yes. with special needs where parents have to give extra attention, double or triple the attention that they need to give. The care, yes. the love, the stress that they have, like how their children are going to manage the lifestyle. And then you come into the picture there as an angel uh, to guide them and protect them and to show them the right way and how to deal with the everyday yes. life situations and how to help yes. them to balance life. That's really very nice. I really like the way you put it. You know, That makes real sense now as to why you entered into this profession. And dear parents, if you are out there listening, listen with care and you could connect with our special celebrity if you need any of her services. So be tuned. Uh, dear ma'am, what inspired you to enter into this journey? You have selected this beautiful field. What was the inspiration behind it? Uh, inspiration I have to go for my school days. Uh, actually, I studied in the school where there's inclusive education because I have 20 years of experience before that, I, around uh, uh, 70, late or 80s. In 80s, my school is a one school in Chennai where they have the inclusive education where my classmates are uh, uh, cerebral palsy and then Down syndrome, uh, hearing impaired. They are my classmates. They are my friends. Friends. And then I had the opportunity to mingle with them. So that's where the inspiration for me, because uh, sometimes the classroom may be a second floor or third floor, or be a polio attack classmate who has a difficulty to climb, and then a uh, Down syndrome child, or difficulty to learn the process of reading, writing, all this thing, and then hearing impaired child, uh, my classmate, all, because now I see they are in the different transformation because of that school. Because around 80s, you just imagine on 80s, when now uh, at, uh, at 2023, many special needs children, they are not, uh, schools are not, majority of schools are not accepting their as their students. But at uh, 80s, that time I decided, okay, I have to become a uh, pediatric related professional. Uh, later on, I know about uh, physiotherapy. So even physiotherapy is a vast thing where uh, physiotherapy means many of them will be thinking that it is uh, orthopedic conditions or uh, 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 ports related but at the time itself I decided how we can rehabilitate how my friends transform their life how they rehabilitate how they because they don't feel that they have some uh, disability itself that much school I brought up. So that's the inspiration for me to become like a physio, a therapy, pediatric physiotherapy. Then after that, I just see that, okay, as a pediatric physiotherapy, I need to need a lot of counseling the parents. Uh, because my uh, studies did not, should not stop there. It has to be continued. Day by day, I have to learn something. As a medical field, we have to learn, we have to update because new new therapy techniques may come so i have to see okay what so then i learned about uh uh, uh I, I i underwent a course on psychotherapy and the counseling and then how we have to motivate how we have to be empower the special parents that's a that's an inspiration for me from my childhood yes dear and thanks to uh, that beautiful school which enabled you to understand you know, that we yes. have to be inclusive. A society that should be inclusive, include everyone in that and respect everyone. And I love the way you said this, ma'am. Empower the parents of special, the special needs children. Empower their parents to make them understand uh, as to how to care, take care of their children. Yes. yes. That's really nice. And I hope the schools that are nowadays also are inclusive and give importance to all the students and treat them alike. Yes. Right? 
when we have employment, inclusive employment, we could in many of the corporates, they have this. They are included. And so we should also have this in schools where students should be given admission and given the love and respect yes. to lead a normal life. Yeah, mainly admission, mainly uh, learning disability child and the ADHD child. Uh, they can attend normal school. They can attend a regular school. I cannot say normal special. We don't need to discriminate. You just see that they can attend your uh, regular school. Uh, because uh, even uh, even many artistic kids, many artistic kids, they went to the regular school and then now they are at a 10th grade or 12th grade. So it's how the school approaches, how school acceptance is a major thing. Even uh, the the it will be a, there will be a lot of difficulties. There will be a lot of uh, barriers for the teachers to handle the child in the classroom. But it will be in the initial stage, up to primary school the child can able to mold and able to ad adapt the classroom environment then they can show the showcase they can show the talent uh, and then uh, cognitive skill then they can be shined very well that's it. yes dear thank you ma'am thank you for sharing my dear friends i'd like you to know that dr r radha balachandar as is the author of a beautiful book called as autism or a paravi parav ever am i getting that right uh, autism or parvi or autism or a parvai. And it is a Tamil book about autism. Ma'am, we would love you to share about this beautiful book that you have written, ma'am, and authored. Yes, dear. Yes. Uh, actually, totally, I wrote it three books. Uh, one is uh, Autism or Parve. It's a Tamil book uh, about autism. It, it has a, a brief intro about autism because once, uh, if you imagine a newly married uh, couple who within one year they deliver a baby and then within two years they find it out the child did not uh, speak and then they had child as a speech delay did not respond to the name and then it's totally uh, miserable for them so when they diagnose the child as an autism spectrum disorder so they don't know what to do it is nightmare for them so this is a book for them who was newly diagnosed autism parents so they can go to what and all what is autism what is types of autism what and all the characteristics of autism why autism kid has the sensory issue what and all the different types of sensory issues and uh, behavioral issue the behavioral issue will be more and then what will be the communication skill because autism comes under the social and the communication skill so uh, what and all the delay in that and how we can overcome because I also would get case studies of different artistic kids, how they overcome when they approach at the time, how they are after the therapy program, how they overcome, how they have been to the normal school and all, uh, regular school. It's a book about the holistic approach of artism. That's a one book. I also translate the book in English called Understanding the Artism, a guide to the parents. So either the same book, it's also in English book, I also included some more chapters like uh, uh, gut brain syndrome. Like that's a major part of autism, which is a research, uh, recent research is taking place. And then social uh, skills and then uh, assistive technology, what and all assistive technology for autism and then latest therapy techniques is in the English book. And then recently, uh, six months back, I released another book name called Maram Erumi. You can imagine Maram Erumi, Katral Purebadam, Governor Siddhartadam, ADHD. That means uh, we cannot expect the uh, fish to climb the tree. It's an Einstein proverb where we cannot, with the, when you make the fish to climb the tree, and then we cannot assess their ability. So that's the thing, Maram Erumi. It's the this book is all about learning disability and ADHD. What and all the different type of learning difficulties and how we can identify learning disability in the primary school level and then in secondary school level, in the college level, and then what is ADHD and why it is very common nowadays. So this book is about, this three book, I, it's already did this. I'm also going to release uh, another uh, few more books. Uh, one book is about the general parenting. 
So it's about general parenting tips, how to handle the general uh, issues, what's the parent or struggles or challenges, what they face. And then uh, another book is about neurodiversity. Uh, the name neurodiversity is uh, because uh, what happens now, uh, medical terminology, we, we usually, as for past 20 years, I first thing I tell to my all my para, all my parents is that don't label the child. This child is autism. This child is ADHD. This child is learning disability. This child did not perform. He is a dumb. He is he is uh, he cannot achieve anything. Don't label anything. We just see what and all. If the child has autism, we just see what and all the characteristics, what and all uh, the drawbacks which the child not able to perform the daily activities and what and all the child's strength because artistic kids are very good in uh, memory skill uh, and then uh, cognitive skill with this strength how we can overcome the weakness that's what uh, and then now uh, in medical terminology it's called a neurodiversity where the autism adhd down so it will be a full book about all the childhood disorders so that's the thing about my book it another it uh, the book journey will be continue yes dear and we thank you for being so lovely and so kind to the neurodivergent community and to the other ones as well to share all of this because many of us out here we don't even know what is the meaning of neurodivergent. Yes. So then when that yes. book is released. So if you lay your hands on that beautiful book, you will get to know who are called as neuro neurodivergents or who come under this beautiful umbrella called as the neurodivergent community. Thank yes. you, ma'am, for all the effort that you're taking uh, to bring out this beautiful book. Congratulations yeah. also for all the books that were earlier published and even now that it's going to thank be published. You, thank you. Dear ma'am, what about your childhood? Is there any event that you remember? Uh, my childhood, um, actually, that's what I already mentioned that I'm very uh, soft-spoken, very shy. Any then, incident? Uh, I would love you to share an incident. Any incident that you uh, in your mind at home or in school, something like that? The incident means uh, the my favorite or uh, my memorable incident is uh, yeah uh, when i do when i did my uh, culturals in schools with my uh, all my classmates who are uh, uh, who are uh, visually impaired uh, and then uh, uh, hearing impaired my friends they are my friends when I, when I did my cultural i did my dance with them uh, because that that's what I told you about inclusive because I still remember how we had uh, how my dance teacher did a uh, choreographing about they included uh, our uh, Down syndrome uh, classmate and then uh, we hearing him but now they are doing very well I want to share this news the my classmate who is uh, hearing impaired now she is uh, running uh, uh, running uh, very famous uh, food a uh, business in UK and then my uh, Down syndrome uh, classmate. She's very lovable. She's very excellent in Vina. So people who are watching this because uh, the time they they the time they ruled out the child as any type of disability or any type of special needs. At the time we will be thinking, oh my God, my child life what will be doing the next but you cannot do any judgment in future they will be lord of wonders they just need some push and training yes dear thank you ma'am for giving hope and encouragement to all the parents who have children with special needs or any disability dear ma'am we'd like to know that what is that one thing that you love about yourself this is Radha and I love myself this is me and this is my unique quality uh, my unique quality, first I can say, it is empathetic feeling to others. So I do, I always see that if someone tells the problem or anything, so I just think how oh, because that it's not sympathetic. I won't say oh why it's a, oh it's I won't I will just feel it as empathetic feeling. Uh, that's my uh, unique thing. And then 
kind hearted i will accept everyone i won't uh, discriminate anything like that uh, they are because that's the thing where my dad always tells me from my childhood uh, don't give it's not that poor or rich we have to treat everyone equally and then we have to be uh, kind to everyone it's not that and then another unique thing is about my hands on technique now nowadays my hands on technique for any kids comes to me i just see to that what and all improvement i can do in one month or two months because uh, uh, re, uh, there is a one kid who come all the way from uh, south africa and then another many kids who comes from uh, uk land uh, uk us here uh, dubai so i just see to that what immediate improvement we can see oh so my uh, almost my 24 by 7 i will be thinking about the kids improvement okay this kid comes means what improvement i can do within few days because i want to see the smile in the parents that's the thing yes dear thank you ma'am for being so uh, you know generous and kind and having this quality within you called as empathy and you say 24 by 7 my head works mm -hmm. on how to bring the balance in the life of yes. these two children and there are uh, clients that are coming from different parts of the world to get connected with you that's what a beautiful thing dear and you know there should be many more dr radhas out there many more who could serve the society and bring beautiful uh, you know memories in the lives of parents and as well as others dear ma'am may we know how you balance the challenges that you face in your profession you might be facing challenges too and how do you overcome all of these challenges uh see actually um uh, the challenges every day there will be a lot of challenges the uh, first i can take tell it as a therapy side like if you see a artistic kid uh, most of them they will be hit us it me they will be pulling my hair and then they will bite me so that that's the thing i i first uh, first time when i choose that i want to treat your special needs children first i thought i should be very patient enough because they they did not do it anything so they intention they are not doing anything intention they are doing something involuntarily they are doing so i am here to help them so that's uh, therapy child because to make a uh, uh, artistic child to sit in one place focus them to bring their attention improve their communication that uh, that skill itself very challenging but once it will be challenging but for me it will be interesting to overcome how we can overcome that challenge and then next one is as a um, uh, as a self made person as a, i'm a running a therapy center a professional service based center this is also a challenge as a woman as a mother uh, it will be uh, challenging for me because there will be lot of hurdles for us to run the center because uh, uh, as we, we are a service based it's very uh, sometimes it may be tough to provide salary to my staffs or uh, it will be like that but for my, my my motto is whoever comes we have to save to them that's that's uh, another challenges in professional side also like as a as a woman entrepreneur whoever has the challenges so i'm also facing that yes dear thank you ma'am for sharing that thank you and you were very honest and genuine with that sharing thank you so much as you said the child might even attack you or bite you and but then you know may try to harm you in you know in their innocence they are not they don't know what they are doing they're not doing it intentionally you said right and you're prepared for that and the other challenges that you face that's really nice you have a wonderful heart and you say you have to deal with them with patience a lot of patience yes yes actually uh, even all my staffs all the all my staffs are well uh, trained well professional therapists uh, i the first time before i recruiting them i will see to them whether they have that patience because uh, uh, that's what i will tell to them because we don't know what happen but they are not doing anything intention we, and then nowadays uh, even parents also uh, they very difficult for them to and with the child i would like to share one uh, case study where one kid uh, came from um, uh, bangalore or uh, i am not uh, i think it came from bangalore the child is classic autism uh, non verbal 
uh, and then the boy only abdicate his pinchy. So he will be pinch himself and then mother. So he will be keep on pinching his parents. So I I also uh, share the techniques how mother has to prevent from because the mother uh, it's not every time we can get the pinching from the child because as a, we also a human being so then i thought lot of techniques for mother to over, whenever he try to pinch you just hold him over here and then bring his hand and then look his high uh, eyes and then tell him be calm be relaxed one two let count for one two three four five and then remove so like that lot of uh, skills get now my staff also know how to uh, manage the artistic or aggressive because we also uh, having a lot of adult artistic uh, personals also coming who is around 30 years, 40 years and then more than 21 years. They will be very aggressive. Even one boy came from US. He is a 15-year-old boy. He's very aggressive. He won't sit in one place. He will be keep on moving here and there, here and there. And then if someone touch him, he has a lot of sensory, immediately he will hit it up. So like that, they will be coming. So uh, first is patience for this uh, treating the patient needs children. Yes, dear. I guess it's a blessing today for all of us to get to know all of this, which we are unaware of. Ma'am, we were unaware of all these things. Most of us, mm -hmm. we just take life as it is. And we don't go into the deep aspects as to there are people like this who really are, you know, uh, suffering and they need help from the right kind of people. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing all of your expertise today, ma'am. Thank you very much. Dear ma'am, how would you want to be remembered in this world? How people should remember Dr. Radha? Uh, they have to remember me as a well-known therapist to treat the patient with children. That's the thing because uh, uh, I want to, because I want to do, I am I'm still doing a lot of research. So some remarkable research has to be there for a patient need children. So they have to be remember your person to treat patient need children. Yes, dear. They will remember you, ma'am, because you've done excellent work and you're passionate about it and you are training others as well. You're allowing them to also understand how to be patient with people or with children suffering from any of these uh, shortcomings, or it, you could say autism, or you could say ADHD, or it comes under the neurodivergent community. Neurodiversity, yeah. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, any movie that has been focused on autism or on the neurodivergent community, which you remember now, and you would suggest all of us, you could view that movie and learn a lot. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of movies now nowadays, but uh, one movie I recently watched, Good Doctor. Uh, Good Doctor is an artistic, uh, uh, it's about artism. Uh, the main thing is the artistic boy who become a doctor, but he's extremely, extraordinarily brilliant. He's, he's, he just remember all the book in his mind. That's movie that it's not a movie it's a web series it's a good doctor where uh, uh, it's about artistic person how artistic person struggle and how he entered their doctor uh, uh, MPBS how he became a doctor and how he is a cardiologist I think he, he is a cardiologist in that movie uh, in the web series it's a very good to watch so and then uh, even our Indian and also the Tarek Javinkar is there. And then uh, uh, in uh, Tamil also, the first movie uh, in Tamil, I just remember, is Anjali, Maniratna movie. That's my inspiration also, a childhood. Because in school, I'm seeing, I'm very friend with my classmates. And then uh, here also, oh, the same movie, it's about... Uh, uh, intellectual previously we called them as a uh, mentally retarded now the word is totally erased we call them as uh, intellectual disabilities so how intellectually disability how the society viewpoint perception about it's totally that's movie is also my inspiration yes dear thank you ma'am for sharing so many movies so many good movies and we thank all of those directors who have been directing these movies we want many more to create awareness in the society. 
Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, apart from all of this, the work, the, the, the hard work that you're putting into, you know, the loyalty with which you're give, giving yourself out and serving the people. Did you ever get some time for yourself earlier? And if not, you now you would like to take out some time and go on a vacation? Uh, not much. <laughs> That's the thing. But uh, yeah, sometimes uh, uh, I will go for vacation. Once a while, I will go for vacation. But even at vacation time also, I will be keep on calling my staff and then I will get the update. Even uh, physically, I'm not present at my clinic, but I once I see the parent, I know I wanted all therapy the staff did and then I can able to communicate because I will be ask them what and all they did and what's the improvement, what and all the challenges they faced and that's the thing. <laughs> that's because even at vacation time also I will be keep on because uh, uh, recently I think three times I went to South Africa to I had a chance to treat a child over there. So at the time uh, the child also shown a lot of tremendous improvement. Uh, so what happened at the time? I will be calling my staff and then every day they will be giving me update at the morning, afternoon, evening. So I will be uh, connecting. That's the thing. Yes, dear. Yes, ma'am. I get to know that. That's really nice to be connected. Even on a vacation also, you just can't forget things. You have to just be connected with what you are doing. Yes. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, what is that one thing you love about yourself? This is Radha and I love myself because this is my special qualities. This is the uniqueness in me. As you said, uh, it is... I love... Yes, dear. Yes. Yeah. It's about love and affection to everyone. And then soft spoken. Uh, because uh, uh, it's not about my profession. I have to be soft uh, spoken. I have to be good listener. It's not about that. But... Basically, I'm very soft and then I'm very good listener. And then uh, uh, that's about me. Yeah, yes. I, I'm really soft spoken. And then uh, it, the, it, people can easily approach me because uh, that's what parents told me that uh, whenever they approached me, we went to a lot of centers, but we have a lot of questions about my kid. But you are the one who sit with us and then you spend a lot of time with us to you address all the worries and then you also help out how to handle the kids. Because I'm that person, whenever parents uh, asked me anything, they, they, they are very free to ask. Recently also, yesterday also, one parent told that uh, one of the house owner, they told that why your child is so much screaming. So your child is what, mad or what? So Im immediately they, she will be start, she started crying and then, he, and then she, uh, my staff will be treating the child and, and then I gave the parent I always tell the parents you just ignore all this these people don't know about the special need children please ignore so every time so that that's my quality that good listener and then always love and affection to everyone else no I, I won't be I will be like to everyone even people who is not able to offer who is very good who is come in rich it's I'm equal to everyone. That's me. Yes, dear. I have seen this quality with you. When I connected with you in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, I could really understand. Yes, you're a person very approachable and very down to earth. And thank you for being like that. We would like many more people to be like you, humble and kind. Dear ma'am, what is that one change you want to see in this world? Um, actually, I'm <laughs> See a lot of changes because uh, uh, because a lot of uh, adolescent kids they are coming to me. So the one thing I have to see the change is discrimination. Still a lot of discrimination is going on. So let's be everyone or equal. We, we are born. So it's not that uh, uh, we are super or someone is uh, uh, poor. It's not like and not only that uh, even equal response, equal uh, opportunity for special needs children. There is also a lot of discrimination. The way, the way society look at the parent and then the way they look at the child. So uh, that's the thing. Discrimination is still there. It has to be overcome that. Yes, dear. We all have to overcome this discrimination and be inclusive and love everyone. We never know. Today they are in that uh, situation. Tomorrow we too could be 
in that situation, yes. we could be facing many difficulties. So it's always good to be uh, loving and kind and accepting others. Dear ma'am, on this beautiful journey called life, how many of your best friends have stood by you? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> because uh, uh, still I have a connection with my school friends, college friends, and then uh, my uh, lot of friends. But now my friends are my parents. <laughs> the parents who bring their kids to me. Uh, so they are my friends and then uh, they will be always support me and then, because I thought I am supporting them. I am motivated. Once they are motivated, they will, ma'am, you have to do this, ma'am. You have to be, uh, you have to be known by others, ma'am. So they always support and then uh, they are my friends nowadays. All my uh, special needs parents who, who came to, uh, who is coming to my center are my friends nowadays. What a beautiful tribute to all of those parents who have special needs children and the way they said, ma'am, you have to really be known by the world for the hard work that you do. Yes. And he said, they are my friends. And accepting them as friends is really beautiful, ma'am. That's really nice. I like the way you put that. Accepting people around us, not for any monetary gain, not for any type of thing to get back, but to give. When you give, you get a lot of friends. And so here, as you are serving them in a very beautiful way, connecting with them, understanding them, and bonding even at a personal level as friends too. That's really nice, dear. Dear ma'am, what brings a smile to your face? Especially at the professional yeah. level. Yeah, actually, whenever I get a good smile is when the kids who comes to me, when they achieve their milestones. Like uh, when the child is started, the child who has developmental delay, not attend the head control when they attend the head control sitting with support the small small improvement when uh when the child achieved that developmental milestone when parents oh my god my my son uh, my son started standing by himself walking by him, the cheerfulness that smile the with the way parents smile that smile is added to me also that's a good smile for Yes, dear. Mm -hmm. Seeing the beauty of the smile on the parent's face also brings a beautiful smile on your face, right? That's dear. Yes. You can understand that. The satisfaction of the parents, the inner joy. Yes. That yes, my child has developed a little because of your intervention, because of the therapies that you've used or enabled us to take it forward. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, any weakness, ma'am? Yeah, I have a lot of weakness. No one is perfect in this world. So I have a lot of weakness. Um, um, uh, the thing is, uh, I the I always uh, think about kids, passion in kids and all. So that maybe I cannot uh, give much uh, attention to my family also. So that may be a weakness. And then uh, I want to be everything perfect, but it cannot be executed. So sometimes what happens, the perfect may be imperfect. So I, then I slowly accept myself, okay, imperfect is okay. <laughs> so it's every day because uh, now, now I can be bold enough to share all my big points. But previously, I already, while well, I started this interview with stuff, I told I'm very shy and then I won't open up my mouth. And then nowadays when my school teacher saw me, oh, Radha, you are talking so much and it's so informative also. I'm so proud of you. That's the thing. So all this weakness is there, but still it will be there. Still I have hesitation. All this thing will be there. And then uh, sometimes we see that we have to be uh, uh, we have to be perfect. This perfectness makes us to be procrastinate also. Sometimes we may be procrastinate a lot of ideas, execution. Uh, it will be also that the list will be going on. But still, even whatever weakness I got, but I will see my strength and then I will be going my life. Perfect, ma'am. That's really nice. Thank you for sharing very nicely. Thank you, dear. Dear ma'am, is there anything that scares you? Bye, um. Yes, a lot of the, uh, the thing it scares me is um, uh, what I can say is uh, uh, 
sexual harassment uh, like uh, because uh, as a mother of a girl i still uh, we in any way uh, anyway i i make her to be strong i have make it to be uh, brave enough to face any situation but nowadays the circumstances nowadays is still we scared no when girl reaches moon uh, that scanners is still there as a mother but it has to be uh, i hope it will be open the sexual harassment is more uh, in it's it's still there it's there, still there so that one as a mother of a girl daughter i'm very much scared of it. yeah it's really scary especially the sexual harassment that we all face when we are traveling or in the market space maybe in a mall we do face a certain amount of this even now there is no age that these people you know the people who are you know um, wanting to harass you in one way or the other like they, there is no age limit anybody and even to the sad thing ma'am uh, to to really talk on this platform is many of the children suffering from either special needs children or people with disabilities have been sexually assaulted by either the yes. neighbors or the family members or the relatives yes yes i see a lot of a uh, lot of condition that's what uh, because i see a lot of condition and then i see a lot of uh, uh, teenage girls they approached me for counseling for harassment so i just see to that okay anyway we uh, we always uh, motivate the girl child to become forward move forward you can conquer the world but, but still still this type of incidents is that so that's the thing so uh, anyway we are uh, teaching the kids at a uh primary level it's a good touch bad touch everything but still it's there so i think uh, uh usually uh, what i will tell is uh, it's not only uh save god our daughter is also we have to give lot of uh, good education to the sons yes. so the boys so when we have uh, when the parent who have boy and girl like me so even for the boy i uh, as a boy child as a son we have to equip them this is, you have to respect give respect to the girls and then it's they are not take for granted if they know about each boy or each uh, men girls are not it's not take for granted they need to be happen yes dear a request to all the parents outside there to take care of your children in the right way to educate them be it a boy or a girl let them learn to respect each other and not take advantage of anybody's innocence and in certain cases ma'am even boys are molested and sexually harassed yes that's also yes. a case which we've heard yes yes so stay safe and if you uh, observe any such thing going on report it immediately take help from someone don't suffer in silence that's the big uh, message yes. open yes. up open up open up yes yeah. dear dear ma'am is there a beautiful message that you would like to share today on this platform for all of us yeah actually the beautiful message is uh, whenever you see a special needs child don't embrace and then don't look the way so the mother did some mistake because of the mother the don't like that uh, because the, the, the child may be screaming child may be hitting the mother you just leave them alone they need they just don't want any advice from you just leave them alone they accept their accept them they itself overcome they itself overcome the tantrums they will be overcome the meltdown you just leave them so whenever even at the bus many parents every day every day because why i'm sharing this platform is every day parents told me that uh, in the do, while traveling the bus the boys started screaming immediately the conductor dropped the child uh, uh, dropped the child out of the bus so it, it is very nightmare for the mother no? in between where i have to go because uh, they are not financially good also so it will be like that so that's a message i want to share yes dear so my dear friends in public spaces as well as private spaces or any place please take care of 
yourselves and the people around you respect them as ma'am says if you've seen somebody like that who really requires help so or if they don't require help you need, need not do anything and just you just have to let them be as they are they will overcome all of that yeah giving a lot of advices why you are like this uh, uh, because we have we are in the society like a lot of social stigma is there because if the any uh, special need child who is uh, because uh, we are we are in the myth that if the child is misbehave at the society is a mother's fault because the child is not is not doing something intentionally if any artistic child or any hyperactivity child is not doing intention because they have some sensory urges there. So because of that, they are doing. So the more uh, parents itself will pacify them. They will make them calm down. But many, oh, your child is screaming over here. We cannot allow them in the shop. We cannot allow them over here. Let, let give some space for them for a few minutes. Then they will be calm down. Because this, everyone not looking down, the mom, mother don't know what to do. So she is losing her presence of mind over there. So she will be, she started crying and then she has a lot of guilt feeling, mixed emotions for the mother. So at the public places, like everyone accept the special needs children and then don't estimate, don't see to that like it's because of karma, it's because of uh, mother did some mistake because it's not only public, it's also in the family issues because of the child, there's a lot of family issues is also there. So that's what I want to address. So don't judge the mother or don't judge the child. Yes, dear ma'am. Thank you for that beautiful message, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh, much appreciated, dear. Thank you very much. Dear ma'am, is there any quotation or a proverb that you'd love to share with us? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, it's my uh, center proverb. Uh, is uh, bringing hope. Uh, bringing hope is our uh, center proverb. So, like, bringing hope, giving life to more kids. That's my hope. Like, bringing hope to everyone else that's great. yes that beautiful message of bringing hope into the lives of others yes. dear ma'am till today your proudest accomplishment wow i accomplished this i feel good you have accomplished so many things being mm -hmm. an author and all of these traveling across the world among all of them where do you feel that wow this is my special accomplishment uh the special accomplishment Till date is uh, first thing is my skill set, my hands on skill set, which I have it on me. And then uh, the past 20 years, I think more than 1000 kids I treated, and then many of them started walking, many of them started speaking, and then many of them they uh, sit in one place, listen, many learning disability kids. They, yeah, they are uh, promoted, they went to next, next level. So it's all together that I cannot tell a single moment because every day is my moment for me. Because every day I will see smile in the special needs parents. So this 20 years, this all the kids, all the kids, I cannot tell one kid because of this kid, I'm so proud. All the kids who comes to me, they make me proud in any other way, because because of the parents, because of the kid, I I will oh this kid did that because the small small joy brings our ma major achievement. That's the thing. How sweet of you, ma'am. You've not focused on one child or one incident or one achievement. You say every uh, you know transformation in the child, every little transformation. Every bit of transformation is an achievement. Yes. It's our achievement for me. Yes, so it, it, it's because uh, for us, it, it won't be very small thing. But as a parent side, my child started, ma'am, now my child started sitting without support. Now one parent will be, ma'am, today we went, uh, uh, we took our child to the cinema theater now you sit down and watch the movie so every day every time they will be share a lot of uh incident so even it's not only the therapy we do even it, the, the way we do the therapy it linked to the daily 
uh, activities for. So one parent, they told me that one, the parent who told that my auto driver stopped at the middle of the road, uh, the same parent told me, ma'am, nowadays I'm coming in auto. My son is not doing anything. Thank you so much. This is also a, it's related to what the therapy, what we do, it's related to the daily activities and then it is related to the improvement. That's it. Yes, dear. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing. Thank you very much. Dear ma'am, do you think, I mean, not do you think, have pets been a source of help to people who have suffered from autism or, or physical disability? Pets play an important role. Would you like to yes. share? That? Yes, actually, pets play a major important role. Uh, actually, it will make them to calm down uh, because it's also a sensory bad uh, they will be doing. Uh, so many uh, parents, they told that uh, the pets make them to be friendly because artistic child, they will be have a difficulty to mingle with others, so communicate with others. So when they mingle with the pet, so they will be gentle. So it will be for, because uh, there is one therapy, is, pet therapy is also coming. Like uh, there is one hypotherapy is there with the horse riding. Uh, for CP child, uh, it's hypotherapy is there. Like that, the therapies are there for uh, artistic child. Yes, dear. And animals are non-judgmental. They don't judge you. Whereas people, they judge and comment and say, but animals, yes. they have that unconditional love. So maybe pets could really be a great source of inspiration and joy to your family if you have a pet. Yes, dear. Of course, there are pros and cons to stay safe. Mm -hmm. Certain pets may be aggressive as well too. We can never say that. Yes. Dear ma'am, what if the Almighty or the universe gifted you a superpower and gave you a chance to choose the superpower? What superpower would you select? Yeah. Yeah, superpower. What I can select is a sensory, friendly environment to everyone. Like, it, 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 because uh, it will be sensory friendly environment to everyone else. And then if I have your uh, superpower, I can. Now itself, a lot of kids started speaking. <laughs> so if I have a superpower, immediately I will make them to do whatever the developmental, they can make them to achieve the developmental milestone just like that. So that's the thing. Make them to talk immediately. Uh, make them to if they're having a developmental delay, physical development delayed in walking, make them to walk immediately. It will be like it is related to my profession. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, how many languages are you conversant in? Yeah, basically I'm in English, Tamil, and then I I worked in Malaysia, so I'm good at uh, somewhat I can able to understand a little bit of Malay. And then uh, I went to South Africa. They we call it as Zulu. So I can I can able to because uh, while treating the kid one two three so the Zulu that is little bit I can able to like it's in uh, understanding. It's in uh, uh, speaking level. Yes, dear. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for sharing. What type of changes do you visualize in the next fifty years? The next 50 years uh, changes uh, as we will be going older. <laughs> the thing is, um, now itself, artificial intelligence play a major role. Now itself, uh, robotic influences are more. So I think the uh, robot will be captured and then uh, many of them will now we are seeing the cell phone like that now maybe 50 years cell phone may be at our brain <laughs> it may be the in the brain itself we can connect one brain to connect another brain maybe it may be there and then uh, uh, maybe more on technically we are very good we will be very strong in 50 years technically that's what uh, we are more advanced we know we may not be need now itself we may not be need mobile uh, we can we, with the palm itself we can do all the typing everything we can do it like that and then what i would like to share is uh, mental health will be a big question mark over that time 
because now it's a compared to 20 years before physically and mentally also we are strong but people who was uh, physically not good also mentally they are very strong to any any challenges they can able to overcome but I, it, the mental health will be very worsting mark because now nowadays it's so kids are very sensitive and then uh, they don't accept the failures so in 50 years everything everything if they think the food may come if they think sandwich may come because it will be like that if it is like that means the kid will be more sensitive more uh, uh, maybe more aggressive maybe crime rate will be more we don't know so mental health will be a big question mark so as a as a mental health professional we have to address that yes dear ma'am thank you ma'am for sharing all of that and as ma'am said, mental health will be a big question mark. So it is our duty to really focus on a balanced mental health for everyone and not to be very sensitive and emotional. You should have this emotional balance where you should really be able to balance your emotions and live a perfect life because life is a gift, a one-time gift for everyone. Yes, dear. A beautiful message, ma'am. Dear ma'am, what if you were given a chance? There was a, imagine, imagine this is an imaginary question. You had a, a time machine in your hand at the click of a button that will take you into the past era. You have to go there, relive somebody's life and come back. Whose life you would choose to relive and come back? Uh, Einstein, Albert Einstein. Okay. Uh, because uh, Albert Einstein is also uh, uh, diagnosed as an artistic. But I want to become Albert Einstein. How we overcome the sensory issue? Because, uh, because you know that Albert Einstein never combed his hair, and then he did. He, he wore the same coat all the day. But he's very intellectual. He's very focused on his invention. He is not. He's he's just ignore his sensory, uh, input, uh, sensory challenges. So I just want to become an Albert Einstein. How we did? Uh, uh, how we overcome the sensory? Because he, there will be a lot of barriers for. Him, but his focus, his vision is only to invention. So I want to become now. I want to know about Albert Einstein's life. How oh, nice. And what a beautiful selection, ma'am. Thank you for that lovely selection. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, uh, I would like you to share your thoughts on constructive criticism. Yes, actually, uh, it's uh, really welcome for a constructive criticism uh, because we can get a positive feedback. Uh, it's a positive feedback where uh, we can uh, we can uh, change ourselves because uh, we are not perfect all the time. We thought that what we are doing is right in, according to our mind. What whatever we do is right, but when someone tells no, uh, you can do it in this way instead of doing this way. You can do it in this way. We can accept that. So usually we have to be welcome, and then we we should not be judgmental that why they are criticizing me or like that. We have to be take like a positive feedback. We have to take it and move on the life. Yes, dear. Thank you for being so kind and letting us know that yes, constructive criticism is something positive. Rectify yourself for your betterment and go ahead. Don't be over sensitive about it. And if it's coming from the right person. You have to really accept that. Dear ma'am, forgiveness, Manipur. Are you a person who forgives others easily? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, forgiveness, uh, we call them as uh, forgiveness therapy. <laughs> because uh, I would like to share an incident like uh, during COVID time, during during COVID time, I had the opportunity to conduct a 5 a.m. club, Dubai 5 a.m. It's a 5 a.m. club, which is hosted by a Dubai person. So uh, uh, in that 5 a.m. club, there's a lot of rituals. Is that the one of the ritual is forgiveness. So in that, I usually share my viewpoints like uh, we have to forgive others. Whatever mistake, it can be a major mistake. It can be uh, which is not at all acceptable. Even that we have to forgive them. It's not that the mistake is, it's okay. It's not that we have to be, to, we should have a very good mental health means we should forgive others. We have to move on. We have to let go. So usually 
in that uh, in that uh, program also i will tell them we always think about forgiving others whether we think about forgive ourselves because we will be thinking because before we judge others we are the very good critic for ourselves we are only person who judge ourselves it's not other person to before itself we will be judging oh today i did not perform well i did be like that. oh i did a mistake so we it, it will be this one will make will make we will make we won't make out to do something forward so first we have to be forgive ourselves we have to okay i did a mistake it's okay because many parents they will have like me like many parents they felt like uh, uh, i don't spend a quality time with my child oh, I, it's a guilt feeling so they will be having lot of self guilt uh, guilt feeling so for it's okay it's okay so it's that forgive ourselves then you can forgive others if you cannot forgive yourself then you cannot forgive others that's my mom so always forgive because we all are human we will do lot of mistakes we will do lot of uh, sometimes we may also throw lot of tantrum it's okay we have to accept we have to move forward but whatever others did also we have to accept them it's not that we have to be talk to them we, it's not that we have to be talk to them we have to be patch up with them it's not that we have to forgive them to our for our very good mental health Yes, dear. Thank you for that beautiful message to forgive ourselves and to forgive others. Thank you very much, ma'am. Dear ma'am, we've come to an end to the main round of the interview, dear. We have another small segment called as the rapid fire round, which will take another 10 minutes. May I take another 10 minutes, please? Okay. Yes. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Uh, dear friends, now it's the rapid fire round where we get to know about the likes and dislikes of our special celebrity. She is Dr. Radha and she's here with us sharing her space, her thoughts and views and of course her profession as well, which is a noble one. Dear ma'am, we'd like to uh, let you know that this small segment, you have to answer either in one word, two words or maximum one sentence. It is a brief session. Is that okay, dear? That's a difficult for me. <laughs> and yeah, I will keep on trying. Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, among the seven days of the week, which is your favorite day? Wednesday. Your favorite number? Six. Tea or coffee? Boost. Wow, that's nice. <laughs> yes, dear. Is it texting or calling? Texting. The insect that you don't like? Mm, Earthworm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Very true. Is it the beach or the forest? Both. Song or dance? Both. Would you Would you mind or would you oblige singing a song for us? Would you Would you do that? No, I'm not here. I'm just a bathroom singer. Both. One line. Would you like to try? Four line. Chinda no. Line. Your favorite song? No, my favorite song. Whatever line. Kanmani unbored kadalan That's it. Yeah, you have a lovely voice, dear. You have a lovely voice. Thank you. Thank you for obliging. Thank you very much. Dear ma'am, is it walking, a two-wheeler or a four-wheeler where you are comfortable? Mostly walking. Is it reading or music? If at all, there's a lovely table with a nice book of your choice, which you haven't yet read and a great music system at the side. You are supposed to choose one. What will you choose? Reading a book. Are you an early bird or a night owl? Mm. What I can say is uh, previously I'm an early bird. Now I'm going to the night owl. So it will be shifting a little bit or not. Yes, dear. That's the same problem with me too. Mm -hmm. I can balance both, but now if I'm late in the night up, then in the morning it becomes quite difficult. Yes, one, one time I will be on the bed, next day. Yeah. Yes, dear. Is it salty, sweet, spicy or sour food? Always sweet. Always sweet. How sweet, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I did it too sweet to reduce that. 
Yes, dear. Dear ma'am, do you consider yourself to be an introvert, an extrovert, or an ambivert? And life is all about money or happiness. If happiness there, money will come. When you are all alone in a room, nothing, no gadgets, no family, no friends, alone you are, and you're connected to your thoughts, where do your thoughts take you? Past, present, or future? Spiritual. Yes, dear. I, uh, do you, I was, pardon? Connecting. <laughs> yes, connecting to the Almighty. Yes, dear. Yes. Dear ma'am, is it socializing or me time? Me time. Are you a thinker or a doer? Both. Almost think, then I do. But mostly thinker. Yes. You believe in experiential learning or theoretical learning? Experience. Experience. That will give you and some technique. Yeah. Yes. Is it an apple or a samosa? What I can say is... <laughs> Apple is very good, but samosa is a reward. Yes. If I did something, I have samosa. If I want to lose weight, apple. Yes, dear. Is it home cooked food or food ordered from out? Home cooked food. Are you a great cook? Samuel Nalla Varuma. No. <laughs> Say dear. My, no. my daughter is a very good cook. I I trained uh, my daughter is doing. Yes. Ma'am, who is your favorite teacher or parent? Either your teacher or sir. My favorite uh, teacher is Malini teacher, my kids. Still favorite. Yes, dear. Ma'am, the name uh, or I mean of your favorite teacher is Mari teacher. You say Malini. Malini teacher. Malini oh, teacher. Oh my God. That's really nice. Thank you, dear. Dear ma'am, the idea of a beautiful day, or nalla nal, you should only tell it in one word. What does a beautiful day mean to you in one word? Beautiful. Move on. Yes, move on. Move we on. have to move on. Yeah. Move on. Beautiful. Yes. Move on is a wonderful way to share that. That's really nice. Don't be stuck there. If you face any problem, keep moving on. Life goes on. Lovely message. And when you help others, do you expect anything in return? It could be a smile or a satisfaction on their face as well. Yes, the beautiful smile. Yes, the beautiful smile. Is it the city, village or town? Where do you love to stay? I think uh, village. Yes, dear. Thank you, ma'am. Your favorite mode of transport? Roadways, railways, airways, waterways? Uh, I love to be in airways, but nowadays, roadway. <laughs> no, yes. yes dear. Occasionally. Occasionally. Airways. Yeah. Yes, dear ma'am. Dear ma'am, your favorite season? Winter season. Ma'am, if at all on a table there were some chocolates, cake and ice cream, you should select any one and have. What would you select? Ice cream. Which flavor? <laughs> Which flavor? <laughs> any flavor. How sweet, any flavor. Mm. Dear ma'am, till date, the loveliest gift that you have received till date? Loveliest gift. It may be too formal, but what I can say is my parents. Oh, okay. great. That's really nice. Be because of my parents only, I'm here. Till now, at this moment, my parents are motivating factor because I'm motivating others, but they are the one who motivate. They also, I, till now, I told them I'm going to attend their interview. My dad told, you can do it. Go on. That's what he told me. So my parents, they That's are my gift. And the, another gift is my my kids, my son and my dog. They are also a wonderful God gift. Yeah. Yes, dear. 
Thank you very much, ma'am, for sharing. We really had a lovely time with you, getting to know especially about your profession, how hard and how uh, focused you are on bringing a balance and change in uh, in the lives of the special needs children, the people, children with disabilities as well, who come under the neurodivergent community. Dear ma'am, do you love to give gifts or get gifts? Give gifts. I collect a lot of uh, uh, programs for parents, so I want to give them. Yes, dear. One last question, ma'am. We would like you to give us a gift today. The gift of three words. We have please, sorry, and thank you as the three magical words. Apart from that, you have to give us today, all the celebrities who come here on Fab Talks, they give us three magical words to continue our life and to focus our energies on improving ourselves. What could be those magical words, dear? Mm -hmm. I should not say the three words. Yes, please, sorry, and thank you. Any other word you can say apart from these three? Okay. It could be something like love, compassion, understanding, power. Okay. Strength. One is strength. You have yeah, to give us three gifts. Oh, three gifts. Okay. Uh, strength, move on, you are doing move on, and then uh, beautiful smile. Wow. Strength, move on, and a beautiful smile. This will really make your world beautiful, my dear friends, and these are really magical. Strength is magical, move on is magical, and a beautiful smile is also magical. Thank you so much, ma'am. Romo, Romo, and Andrea had a Thank lovely you. time and a lot of sharing and We'd love to connect with you on many more sessions on the International Fabrics. Yes, of course. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, I hope uh, I would like to say this all, all over the world. If any special parents are watching this, don't be sad. Don't be down. Your child will do a lot of wonders. You may think, okay, my son is not. Your child will definitely do a lot of wonders. They just need a adequate training and stuff. All the best for them. Thank you, ma'am, for that lovely message towards the end. And I would request all the parents, if you really require any of the assistance, you can get connected with our special celebrity. She will be happy to help you out to take care of your child. Rombo Nandri, ma'am, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thanks, baby. My dear friends, with this, we come to an end to the International Fab Talks for today. Be tuned and stay with us. Be connected. Or we will be back again. Thank you so much. Stay safe.